I don't know about you guys, but when I was going through cancer treatments, it felt like my brain was turning to mush. Every time I went to the car, I'd forget my keys. Or I'd go downstairs to grab something and completely forgot what I went to grab by the time I got there. It was really frustrating. I now know that I was experiencing something called brain fog. And I wanted to talk a bit more about it with you guys. So I tracked down Dr. Greg Lucier, who is an emeritus professor in neuroscience at the University of Calgary. For the past eight years, Greg has been teaching a course on brain fog that was developed by another neuroscientist, Dr. Heather Palmer. So let's see what Greg has to say about the topic of brain fog. So we know now that brain fog exists and that it is and can be a side effect of cancer. Um, you, we also know that it's not solely due to the chemotherapy. People that, that don't get chemotherapy often get brain fog. So it was originally thought that it was due to the chemo, but that's not necessarily the case now. So we also know that there are other stressful events in people's lives that can lead to symptoms that are similar to brain fog, namely uh, post-traumatic stress, sometimes postpartum stress, different things. So it seems that it could be due maybe to, me, to a big physiological onslaught onto the body. It appears that people that experience brain fog have to really uh, use different areas of their brain and you and really concentrate on what they're doing that they and a degree of concentration that they didn't have to attend to before so for example it may have been that you could easily remember things that you read before you like to play bridge you could follow the suits or you could go out and entertain people meet three or four people and remember their names now it becomes more of a struggle for that people find that um, often say i used to like to read by the time i get to the bottom of the page i don't remember what i read at the top so you have to put a concentrated effort into retaining that short-term memory uh, one of the things that we do know is that it usually passes after a certain period of time. You know, six months, a year, they're back to where they were before. Other people, it drags out for two, three, four years. So it's really, um, it's one of those things that we really have to do a lot of research on. So what we're teaching now in the program is tips and techniques to get that control back until hopefully you get to the point that you were at before. You have to get out there and challenge yourself and challenge your brain. And maybe it means that you're going to have to make lists that you didn't have to make before. You're going to have to put things down on post-it notes and stick it on your dash that you didn't have to do before. You're going to have to um, take pictures with your iPhone of where you parked your car now because before you could always remember it. It's little tricks and techniques but at least you're going out and you're doing things. You're functioning in the world. So these are little workarounds to save you that, not embarrassment, but save you that feeling, oh well I just can't do this anymore. I won't go because I might get lost or I, I, I don't want to go out because I'm going to be introduced to somebody and I'm going to forget their name. Uh, timers. Timers are a great thing. We all use, nobody would think about baking cookies without a timer. And yet, often what will happen is, you've got to be someplace in an hour, you think, oh, I'll just sit down and I'll check my email. And then the next thing you know, 45 minutes have gone by, you get up, oh my gosh, I'm rushed, I'm late, you're in a fluster, you can't find your keys, you're, you're in a tizzy. T buy a little timer. Timers are cheap. You set the timer, I've got time, I've got uh, an hour before I have to go to my appointment, I'm going to check my email, set your timer for 20 minutes. You search your email, the timer goes off, okay, I got to go now, otherwise I'm going to be late. It's, it's to avoid that frustration of being rushed, and timers are a great, great help. Well, and also habits, getting into a habit. When you come in the house, hang your keys in a certain spot every day. Put things in places that you remember. Develop a habit. Also, self-talk is really, really great. And this sounds silly, but if you verbalize something, if you say to yourself, I'm going to go downstairs to get a loaf of bread out of the freezer, a 
can of beans out of the pantry. Whatever it is, you're seeing it, you're saying it, because we know that the more sensory modalities that you use in trying to remember something, the more you're apt to remember it. So when you get downstairs, you're going to say, oh yeah, what was on that second finger? It was the can of beans out of the pantry. These are just simple little techniques, but they do help. I think that the biggest take home message with regard to combating brain fog is think of the brain as a muscle. You know, if you're, if you're bedridden for months, you have to get up and learn how to walk again because your muscles are weak, they've atrophied. Brain fog is really sort of a weakness in that sense. So what you have to do is you've got to exercise it. Challenge yourself. Don't, the worst thing you can do is say, well, I'm not going to go and do this anymore because I'm going to be embarrassed. I'm going to forget somebody's name or the, I'm going to be in a conversation and the word just isn't going to come to me. No, in order to get that functionality back, you've got to get out there. You've got to do that. If you like doing Sudoku, Sudoku do that. If you like crossword puzzles, do that. Challenge yourself. Make yourself use that brain because it's only through exercising it that you're going to get back to where you were before. And that's really important. Well, there you have it. Brain fog is real. There's lots of people that have to deal with it, even people who've never been diagnosed with cancer. But it doesn't have to be permanent. There's lots of things that you can do. You can use external aids to help you remember things like writing them down, taking photos of things. Uh, you can make habits to make sure that you put things in the same place all the time so you don't forget them. There's a whole lot of things that you can do to sort of regain some of that function that you feel like may have been lost when you've been going through cancer treatments. And just so you guys know, it took me some time, but I feel like my brain is back and I feel really good about where I am. I can remember things and I've actually incorporated a lot of these habits that I learned from Greg into my daily life and they just help me in general. So uh, I hope that's encouraging for you guys to know that there are things that you can do to help uh, combat brain fog.